Hey, it's the Shroud, and you're listening to TCR. Okay, so let's start. Hello. Hello and welcome back to another edition of The Center Ring, a.k.a. TCR, a.k.a. your favorite esports podcast. I am your host, Tim. And of course, we'll have Britton and Nuge later on. But right now, this is episode 148 coming to you live, pre-recorded from an undisclosed location. The date is March 15th, 2019. The time is... A very early 1.30 a.m., which I'll explain in just a second. But before I do that, be sure and follow us on Twitter, at The Center Ring. Our website, tcr.gg, which is under construction for quite some time now. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to web design, so if you do, uh, please let me know. I would uh, definitely appreciate any help I can get. And of course, though, be sure and join our Discord. Be a part of that conversation. We love listening to our listeners. We have listeners in there uh, that are always talking, you know, CSGO, whatever. Doesn't even have to be that. Whatever you want to talk about. But as to why I am awake at 1.30 in the morning editing this episode, you ask? Well, that's a very good question, and I have a very good answer for that. We have two very special guests on today's episode. Chris Mann, president of Ultimate Media Ventures, and Nate Ekman, who is the co-founder, co-founder and designer and creator of Alt Esports. You may have recently heard of them, or maybe you've already heard of them, but they've re- been recently in the news as they have partnered and released their Overwatch League clothing line, or at least the first of it. Uh, I know Nate way back. We've met at uh, the MLG Columbus Major, and we we're like, "Hey, man, why don't you come on the show and do a quick little interview?" Tell us what you guys are about, you know, introduce the line, all that fun stuff. And that quick little interview turned into a very long discussion, but a good one. Uh, Talking about how they started, um, you know, what you can expect from them in the future, and and really just kind of a general business and esports type of discussion. It's very good, very interesting. We learned a lot, and I think you will too. So we decided just to do a, a special episode because there's no way that we could edit it down and do it justice so here it is uh again with chris mann and nate ekman from ultimate esports and i hope you enjoy Uh, we have two very special guests and friends of the show uh, from ultimate media ventures you might know them as alt esports you might see them on twitter as a very hip popular clothing line newly partnered with overwatch but they're much more than clothing so let's introduce them we have chris mann president of ultimate media ventures and nate ekman co-founder and designer of alt hello gentlemen how are you good doing great yeah yeah pleasure to be here no the pleasure is all ours um i mean obviously me and nate go way back we randomly met at the hotel bar at MLG Columbus at the major many years ago yeah. and it's crazy to think back then we were both like I just started the podcast I think I was probably only 20 something episodes in if that and then you were just kind of I remember you saying like oh yeah we're, we're starting this thing called ultimate and it's kind of esports centric <laughs> we do events yeah, and that was I had just started like officially um the company uh like two days before that like we'd been kind of building it for a couple months since november that event was in april and i remember really distinctly like waking up april 1st um you know april fool's day right and it was like 5 a.m so west coast time it was it was early and i changed all my social media all my kind of official you know uh, public messaging to say like, Hey, you know, ultimate is a real company. I'm, I'm one of the creators of this thing and it's real and it felt so great. And to, to walk through the cold biting air into the arena that the first couple mornings and stay at that particular hotel with, you know, guys like you, all the players, like all the staff, everyone was there, uh, was just completely amazing to kind of kick off really what what was our company's first real event and that kind of steamrolled into where we are now and 
you know, like you said, that was a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, it is a very small industry, but, um, you know, it's been a really incredible journey and got guys like Chris with us now who just completely are amazing and he runs the show. So <laughs> I'm just a lucky, I'm just a lucky guy really. Right now. <clears throat> I will let me ask you this if we can just go back to Columbus for a second because you mentioned the hotel and how we were there with all the big wigs and everything for the major. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that was the hotel they were all staying at? You know, yes, because we were we were put in the block, we were put in the MLG oh, block. Okay, so you were yeah. okay, okay. See, we yeah. did not know. So when we booked that hotel, we just got extremely lucky. <laughs> like, yeah. we walked yeah. in and saw, I think it was like CLG just hanging out in the front, and we were like, oh. Well, this will work uh -huh. out. <laughs> like, this has worked yeah. out pretty well. Well, there were there were a lot of other like guys like Chris. Chris knows Rishi from Twitter. He at the time he worked for MLG and he was just in the lobby that day. Okay. You know, and so is that how you got like, at Ultimate on Twitter? <laughs> Chris, we can't you want to close? We I have was... <laughs> we have full secrets that that enabled us to get that amazing handle. I mean, YouTube, I won't lie. Whoever like... went inactive. Like I, I love Ultimate. I, I love the alt clothing line. But having at Ultimate is the most impressive thing about your company. Like you should see some of the <laughs> mentions you. that we get now, because that's fairly new. You know, we got the we secured the handle a few weeks ago. Um, thank you, Rishi, very much. Um, but yeah, the 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 people that mention it, uh, I tell you, it's it's quite diverse. I, I think there's probably four <laughs> or five different groups that perhaps don't realize that it's changed ownership to a, a gaming lifestyle and an esports company. Uh, but you know, that that's a whole other topic for another day. They'll they'll figure it out. So when did you come on board, Chris? Were you were you on board back in Columbus? Uh, Columbus was a, a, a fabled sort of early stage of our company, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One of the first majors that, that the company was involved in. And I came in, when did I come in? I came in about two years ago, almost to the day. So I was uh, sitting in Berlin, Germany, actually, uh, on a business trip. I was running a, a marketing and design firm uh, for six years prior to this. And been a gamer my entire life, wanted to get back into this. Uh, one of Nate's partners, JB, and I go back many, many years. So uh, JB sort of roped me in out of a, a relatively insane life that I was leading, you know, traveling the world, uh, working for billion dollar brands, working 100 plus hours a week, uh, inventing the future of different industries and all that uh, to, to come back in and, you know, aptly join what, uh, what they called the pirate life at the time. And you know, the, the company was, was definitely in an early stage. It was focused on a lot of different things. You, you should actually see the back of our business card. I think there's like eight logos on it still to this day, which is uh, a little bit confusing. So I was brought in actually to run uh, a, a vertical of the company that I shut down on the very first day that I, I came to work there and then I said goodbye and then they made me the chief marketing officer about two hours after that. So um, coming in, it, it was really, uh, I, I would say, focus, right? My job was to, to really find out uh, where were the opportunity spaces in the business and in the industry as well, the voids. You know, I think Alt w was, was definitely doing an amazing job covering uh, as the very first esports streetwear brand you know there, there mm -hmm. are many many of them now but you know nate and and crew just just really came out the gate strong and established themselves as alt which i think is nate's core passion uh, but our company is so much more than than just product you know and and our studio that we have so we're there a little bit more with you but i've been about two years with the company now yeah so so at what point did you guys realize that wow we we have something here. This this is our break. Right now, you know, I'll, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, We're, you guys have been associated it. with other teams, right? CCR, well, man, all day. Oh, it's there you true. go. It's a big honor. <laughs> Nate, why don't you, why don't you start? I'll, I'll that say. One. Um, I think for for me, it was quite honestly like having um, when Chris joined the company. It felt like we. It wasn't just a couple of guys with big ideas, you know, and building some monstrous shell of a studio at the time, you know, full of passion, full of basically like imagination. Um, 
it became very real. It felt like we had like a very high caliber of thinker and um, someone with the right level of leadership to help us become a real company. And I, I rem- and I, and that's a very subjective thing to say. It'd be like, oh, I, it finally felt like a real company. But you know, we've since added um, an incredible, humbling amount of brilliant people who have done such great work in their lives and their careers, who've done things that I've wanted to do, like building a hundred million dollar company, like gentlemen who have done that two, three, four times over, um, who get to, I get to work with every day. So I think for me, it was mostly looking around the, the studio and being like, wow, I'm surrounded by really, really capable folks. And together we can do something really incredible. And it was really Chris who helped, like you said, bring the focus um, bring the leadership, bring the, the, you know, the ability for people like me to just really express our passion, um, effectively or enable, as he says, you know, business enablement to really take shape. So I think that, that for me was huge. And then after that, it's like, you know, working on bigger and bigger deals and bigger and bigger contracts and bigger and bigger this and that you just keep chasing and grinding, um, and it never really stops from there, but I still show up every day to work with the people that we get to work with. And, um, I consider that a huge honor and, and really what, what set, set the tone for me very early. Well, and, and I would build on that by saying we already talked a bit about how, uh, we, we recently became legitimate in the eyes of social media by, by getting a little verification mark on Twitter. So perhaps that was it for me, you know, the culmination of years of hard work. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, you know, you, you put your head down. You guys can can relate to this. I mean, you've done how many of these 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 podcast episodes, right? I mean, you just you just do them all the time. The regimen mm-hmm. of showing up and uh, just doing your thing, grinding day over day and, and you know, all of a sudden, it's it's a year later, two years later, ten years later, and you come up for air, and you kind of look around, and there's all this stuff around you that uh, wasn't there the last time, and, and pause to to just kind of smell the roses. And so, me, my journey started a little bit after Nate. Um, it really was, I'd say, probably late last year, moving into the holiday time frame. It was becoming more and more clear that, um, at least on the consumer brand side, it, with with Alt uh, as part of our our portfolio, uh, Alt was starting to gain some traction. Not just as a community company, we have our core nucleus of of you know fans and community members, people that have supported us from day one. I mean, Nate and I, you know, could could literally tell you the name of every single Alt customer um, up until probably about six months ago, right? Uh, so we earned every single one of our of our friends, really, in our community, you know, one at a time. And so I think as as we started to see for me, as I started to see on the alt side more and more of our our apparel just in random photos, uh, pros that I had never met or that, that I knew that we weren't talking to uh, were showing up on on main stages and in content pieces, uh, wearing the clothing, um, talking about. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of the guys at uh, Beyond the Summit, uh, particularly in the Smash community, uh, really gravitated uh, very early on. So while we caught fire, I'd say, in a couple of of the fun vertical communities inside uh, esports and gaming, uh, I think we really got our our foothold in the Call of Duty world. So it's, it's serendipitous in many ways that you guys met at a major in Columbus and you know, we've been with uh, our, our partners from EU United uh, as two young companies growing up through the space together, um, having each other's backs and all of that. And, you know, we're at the point now where mm-hmm. there are global publishers that, you know, are, are doing deals with us directly and um, want us to help understand and invent and, and curate gaming lifestyle as as mainstream culture with them. So I think now we're just living a dream. I mean, it's the, the most exciting time to be alive and be a fan of video games right now, right? Your United apparel is something we were talking about earlier, actually. It really is some of our favorite apparel out there. 
you know, for an esports team, it's such a, a clean and good look. And so, I mean, I'm even going through it now. It's funny because I'm on your guys' site as we're, we're chatting and looking at all your fantastic stuff. You know, the United stuff is something that, that definitely stands out to me. W- one cool thing I noticed, you know, the similarities as, as we've talked about, you know, how you guys met a couple of years ago and now how we're finally getting a chance to meet you. You know, Overwatch League is, is something that we also consider one of our big breaks in the sense of us getting to partner up with them recently. And obviously, now your big announcement um that, that's come out here how did that relationship kind of form with with you and overwatch oh my gosh um well i'll say chris really came in and saved the day on this on on this one but i'll i'll say um we were fans first you know we would go to the pre-inaugural opening weekend as fans and this was like before they even would be on broadcast and we would watch the games. We'd sit in the arena. You know, we live locally, so we're very fortunate to be able to, to go to the arena a lot. And we just became obsessed with and in love with the community. And this was even before it was out of beta and the league hadn't been globally franchised yet, you know, and this was very early days. And I think we just identified with what the community was all about, about being inclusive and diverse and expressive and colorful and vibrant and all of these wonderful um, displays of passion and the, and the heroes and in what the league was becoming and to see franchising become global. And just like Chris said, like all of that energy of like, this is happening now. This is what, you know, as a gamer, you dream about, you dream about the world of, video games becoming this massive global force and to just appreciate it on that level is huge and to participate on in it is amazingly humbling but i think for us it was let's participate even more let's get involved let's let's take action and per, and be a part of how this is shaping on the front line of it so we really pursued it over a long period of time. And I think it was because we were so passionate and still to this day, like I just love being a fan of the overwatch league. And I think that's really what, uh, what makes it possible. Why a small company like us and a small brand like us, you know, can identify with such a big publisher is just, we're very passionate and they, they can see that. And, you know, the, the choices that we make, like reflect that, that level of dedication to, helping build that community as, as members of it. So, I mean, that's kind of my, my point of view on it. I don't know, Chris, if you have a, um, a thought on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, you know, look, alt is first and foremost, uh, a brand, right. And, and we're, we're very much on an entrepreneurial brand journey. It's a lifestyle brand, you know, representing Mm -hmm. gamers from all around the world. And so, you know, as we started to go down that path of building something, you know, that, that was really unique and, and hard. I mean, as a first mover, you know, we, Nate was designing, you know, elevated jerseys really out the gate. I think the first batch of jerseys we did for the United guys were, were made from highly technical materials that it took expensive designers, you know, inside Los Angeles and New York, you know, months and months to come up with the patterns for, and, you know, intricately cut and sew. I mean, uh, the the stuff was a, a work of art, right? Um, and so so we had a disruption story right out the gate. And um, what was interesting is that as more people discovered the brand, um, vis-a-vis some of the partnerships that we had, you know, the earliest stage of which were were was reunited, really, right? Uh, the 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 fans would come and they would say, "Man, I love Alt." And I the coach's camo jacket was our our sort of historic, our bestseller. It's this is this really great iconic piece, you know, with these big, you know, three letters on the back, ULT. Uh, so you see it all over the place. And people came to us, you know, companies, you know, different leagues, actually, even publishers and said, hey, we love alt so much. Is it possible that, that you guys could could merchandise for us? And we said, no, of course not. You know, we're a brand, you know, we're not a merchandising company uh, for almost a year. And then we we opened it up to uh to to some possibilities and we started down our path with the united and what what we quickly realized is that um being a brand who also uh learns uh, about the types of products what's resonating with specific communities because uh, as you guys can imagine you know a lot of the different communities don't necessarily have the same purchase patterns 
people wear different things. The culture is totally different, you know, game mm-hmm. over game, as you as we all know. So uh, what was really fascinating was, I'd say, how we started to gain traction. And, you know, it, it, it was in our ability to be dynamic and, and do our own brand drops for alt, um, but then also have alt designing for other brands too and associate ourselves with them from the very beginning. And that started us down this, this sort of secondary parallel path under the product side where we, we really started to understand the unit economics of being a merchandising company and the operation around that. And uh, it, it helped us build mm-hmm. a, an amazing funnel of, of new product. And you know, pretty soon you guys are going to start seeing consistent weekly drops you know every single week and there'll be a mixture of the core alt brand as well as uh, other products that we've designed on behalf of of some of the most amazing individuals um teams leagues publishers etc in the world so we're just honored to to be on this 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 journey still and uh, it is still very much an entrepreneurial journey for us as we've been trying to open up the the gaming lifestyle category at big box retailers as the alt brand, you know, in particular mm-hmm. with our, our partner Zoomies, right? Which is a skate shop in, you know, North America. So for us, you know, that pioneering journey uh, is is quintessentially part of, of, of who we are. We'll always be on the front end of sort of moving the category forward. You know, we, we really focus mostly, I would say, on, on growing the entire collective at, at a foundational level uh, showing the world what gaming lifestyle means that it's okay to be a gamer it's even better than that it should be celebrated um, for all these amazing reasons that that the whole world is starting to discover now so to play a small part in that is uh, is genuinely just it's it's surreal one thing with with alt uh, that I've you know you you go to the website uh, altesports.com that's for the clothing side of it you instantly see that you guys definitely have a unique style. It's very easy to tell that, okay, this is a alt piece of clothing. Uh, I know you mentioned the camo coach jacket. I love the ghost triangle one. What type of, like when you signed up with Overwatch League, uh, I've always heard through the grapevine that Blizzard is very strict on people who want to represent their, their product, right? They're very protective of it. Was it a, f- I want to know two things. What type of freedom do they give you in designing their product, right? For an Overwatch team. And was that a fear going into it as like, okay, this is our first time, like having to produce something that we can't really like, you know, like maybe they tell us how to design something and that's not us. Right. That's a good question. And, and Nate will, Nate will sort of, help fill you in i think on the creative approach but (laughs) as we as we get there right the the thing i want to just i want to preface with all of this is uh, we very much earned our our stripes with the guys from activision blizzard you know it it started with with call of duty as we talked about already and um we were fortunate enough uh to meet some of the the best folks that we've we've met so far on our journey um, Tucker Roberts, Joe Marsh, uh, and Hung Tran, who were sort of the original three guys behind the Philadelphia Fusion at Comcast. And they brought us on board uh, about halfway through uh, the last season of the Overwatch League uh, and allowed us to uh, essentially design the 10 SKUs each team was was awarded um, and, and given the opportunity to sell on their own, you know, online, right? Um, and so we we started our Overwatch journey with the Philadelphia Fusion, uh, and and you know essentially learned a lot about uh, about not just the league because as Nate said we were already fans. I had, I've been playing the game since Alpha, but you know I stopped playing it I think in beta. <laughs> I wasn't very good. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the the amazing thing about all of this is that uh, as we dropped new new releases and uh, we started to do our our alt thing. Um, inside this new community, it became wildly apparent that um, what Blizzard had created here with the the world's first esports franchise league here um, was ostensibly unique. And it was very different than what we've all seen with Riot and League and and what they've been doing. Um, And so I think from our side, uh, the ability for us to come in and, and believe me, this partnership took 
forever to 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 create. I mean, we started talking to them uh, predating, you know, really E3 last year. So April, May, you know, 2018 uh, was when our conversations with them really started. Uh, and it took up really? until about I mean, honestly, our, our contract That's wasn't signed amazing. until January of this year. So uh, and then we were given, uh, you know, about a month uh, to, to launch. And as you guys know, that that's just not enough time, right? So uh, it's been a little hectic. And, and, you know, Nate will fill you in a little bit on, on what it's been like to, uh, to, to go on that design journey and address those, those two questions about, you know, how much freedom that, that we've, we've, been, ha we've been able to have um, and sort of what that all means and where it's going, too. I'll say this. Creatively, getting to work with Blizzard is a complete dream come true. I can't even say, like, you would like as a gamer i put them on a big mountaintop like they're the they're the greatest game publisher t to me in the world and the ability to work with their designer of that league the ability to work with the league office to work with the the, the head like the c level marketers um is so inspiring that it feels highly collaborative it feels like we're on this journey together and the ideas that um that are i'm really passionate about are things that we that we spend a lot of time talking about together as a team as a group and we all are super aligned and in sync like every day um with where the work is going so it feels like a big co-creation exercise and i think if i was a different type of creative mind um that that was very fixed in my points of view it might be different but I think part of the creative process of exploration and discovery and collaboration is super important to me and in my in my work. So the ability to um, learn and adapt and share and express and find new exciting ways to do things um, is just is just in my DNA, and I think it's in some of theirs too. So it totally feels um, completely creatively liberating exciting freeing um i feel challenged i feel inspired so um you know absolutely yes do they have like an incredible brand guide like yes absolutely do they have a lot of you know guidelines and regulations like yes absolutely is it is it an insane process you know um yes absolutely um but is it come out with work that will touch the fans in a meaningful way like yes everybody's on that page together we all want to give the fans something great and we're all willing to do the work and show up and do the work so in that way like it doesn't feel like there's there's a wall of regulation it feels more like there's this amazing launch ramp into awesomeness and we can all go on that journey together so I mean, I'm just thrilled. Like Chris said earlier, this is a complete dream come true and we're just living in it and it's just like completely exciting. So um, I can't say enough good things about it, to be honest. Like these guys, these guys from Blizzard could could do, I mean, Activision Blizzard, they could they could do a deal with, with any company in the world that they select, right? And this has actually been said to us by them. You know, we could we could work with whoever we want, but... You know, there's there's a lot of, of rationale and logic behind, you know, who they're partnering up with. It's it's not seemingly random. It's not the highest bidder. It's not perhaps in some cases the people who are the most qualified. You know, there's there's much more to it than that. You know, the as you guys know, I mean I'm a lifelong fan of of, of Blizzard. I've been playing Blizzard games since uh the very beginning and some of them incredibly competitively. Uh for instance, StarCraft uh was was my game you know um mm -hmm. back in the day and so i think from from our lens now being able to to share and create this this esports thing as a brand who who came from inside the esports industry you know that's really what what brought us to them and them to us you know is is our point of view is how we're creating gaming culture um in our community in our way we're not buying it. You know, we've never spent a dime marketing our brand. Um, it's all been earned, you know, through blood, sweat, tears and, and long days and nights. Um, so I, it's really about the narrative. And 
as a as a young brand that's growing up and you know now having really big powerful friends you know like like blizzard uh giving us an opportunity and a platform to put our our brand right next to their brand right yeah. you know it it's something that that not only elevates us um but it, it also allows our community that, that we were built inside of, I, I say that Ult was forged inside the fires of, of esports, right? Um, and so for Blizzard, that was quintessentially important that we weren't another company and then we pivoted into gaming lifestyle apparel. Uh, we you, started you there. saw the uh, like, oh, esports. I hear this is can this is going to be big. Let's make esports clothes. Like, <laughs> you know. right. and, and there's plenty right. of those guys out there, though. Yeah, that is something. And nothing that, nothing that against them, right? No, nothing of course. They didn't come out with a, a dress. Oh my gosh, you guys! <laughs> come on. <laughs> Please. I'm the just tweet, saying the, the tweet that stopped the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I will say that uh, I want to ask one more question about the Overwatch League lineup, and you don't have to answer with anything that will get you in trouble. But uh, here in Texas, it's already getting sort of too warm for hoodie for hoodies. When uh when can we expect a summer lineup? Wow. Um. How do, how does next Thursday sound? I mean, <laughs> that is that there sounds go. perfect. You heard it here first. <laughs> that I mean, look, sounds I think perfect. We're, we're trying to bring you guys new stuff. Um, like Chris said, like on a weekly basis. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'd say we're working so hard. There's if I. There's literally like so many people that we get to work with every day in the studio that make this all so possible from design to logistics to planning to just manufacturing, sourcing, um, you know, sampling everything. And we're all really diligent to bring new exciting things. So seasonality will sure be a thing. Moments will sure be a thing. Stories will be a thing. I think, um, the ability to have a lot of different diverse options is really at the core of the the philosophy behind this. So, you know, yes, we came out with some some cozy, warm stuff. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. But you know, I think um, it was really to make a statement about color, mostly, and about being unique and expressive. So, I'd say expect some more unique, expressive things. But um, in the body styles, you know, things that adapt to warmer climates like you have down there in texas you know i'm a i'm a year i live in one of the hottest states in the united states but i'm a year-round hoodie guy and i got my eye on that dallas full uh, dallas fuel uh sandstone hoodie cool. that is that mm-hmm. is really clean i mean and it's a very simple but just clean look well That's done a, it's an amazing compliment i think um thank you and i love that color as well and you know, being a gamer who didn't have a lot of options, you know, years back on modern, like you said, clean, wearable stuff. I think that's really in our core. And, you know, we're, we're flattered that you would say that. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Now, I am going to pivot us off of the clothing for a moment here because you guys are obviously involved in, in more. You're more than just a clothing company, right? And That's so, true. you know, a couple things that I've, I've seen that caught my eye were, you know, I see the Battle Series stuff on your website, the UMV um content creation and, and the fact that you have this 22,000 square foot facility. Can you give us a little bit of insight as to what are some of the other things, you know, Ultimate's working on right now? Absolutely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give you a little a little peek behind uh, what we've been up to on the studio side. So uh, obviously a, a clothing company doesn't need 22,000 square feet of, of what I call an eSports temple um, that's essentially designed inside an old skateboard wheels, you know, factory, right? Uh, state-of-the-art technology. Our facility is essentially an ESPN or an NBC Sports 4 our world and our industry. So we're a private, closed, business-to-business company. You know, we, we're Switzerland. We're agnostic. We work with everybody in the ecosystem. And, you know, that that position grants us a lot of, of access as well as great responsibility because, you know, we find out about things that um, most people don't know about. And, and, you know, part of who we are is because we've established a very trust-based relationship with um, with a lot of our industry leaders, you know, in different different 
capacity. So for, for us, you know, the, the content side of UMV uh, really represents uh, in some ways an, an even bigger opportunity um, than the lifestyle brand and, and what we're building out on the product side of things. So, you know, our industry is, is, is filled still um, with a lot of content that is, is relatively straightforward. You know, a lot of, lot of player journey narrative, documentary style, you know, follow the player to X event and, you know, Y tournament. And, you know, there's, there's great victory and there's defeat and everyone has such a unique story. It's, it's amazing to, to understand the humans behind uh, the main stage, right? Um, but for us, you know, as you think about people watching video games as a form of entertainment, obviously there are amazing platforms, you know, that have that have spawned out. Um, Twitch being the you know the de facto, but you know our our world is filled with people who don't even know what Twitch is, right? And so right. Right. for us, you know, the the more linear um, original content path is is the path that we're on. It's a much harder journey. Um, it's it's gaming as an entertainment proposition for everything that lives outside the actual game IP itself, right? And and you even have to go beyond on about the players to to unlock uh, that that really special mix of you know what is unique, what is repeatable, um, and what is something that is authentic um, in the tone of of our community, you know, that will be received by it. And so, you know, we have currently about 10 to 12 different original IP uh, just concepts in our pipeline in different various stages. Some of them have pilots that have been shot that are currently being shopped out um, all throughout the, basically the Hollywood landscape. So um, you'll start to see some of our content pop up very soon. Uh, on massive services like Crackle and Hulu, uh, and possibly even Netflix too. A lot of the OTT providers um, who are really starting to understand that there's a huge opportunity uh, for this type of content. Um, and so for us, we want to, to be positioned as people who are not doing the same type of content as everybody else in our industry. And I'll, I'll give you one example right now, and it's actually not to bring it back to the Overwatch League, but um, we as, as UMB um, are actually, we've been hired to do all the brand marketing, brand management and content um, for the Paris Eternal for this this season of the Overwatch League. So That's awesome. we formed uh, a, you know a, a little task force out of our studio group and you know, we have people that are embedded with the team every single day. Um, and the, the types of content that we're focusing on there, um, it feels very familiar, you know, to, to a lot of other content types that I, that I had referenced before. But there's one thing that, that's different about it. And, you know, one of the things that, that we, we aligned on with the, the owner of the Paris Eternal, which is an amazing gentleman named Drew McCourt, um, Drew really challenged us to, to be real and to have a very raw uh, sort of tonality. And, you know, the, the Eternal have, they're in their, their, their own inaugural season as an expansion team. You know, it's, it's a tough time. They're, uh, you know, in about 14 days, they're going to be the only official Overwatch League team in all of Europe after Brexit happens, right? So goodbye, Spitfire. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> You're right. Oh, it's wow. true, you know, if they go that. through with it or not. So um, there's there's a lot riding on these guys. It's, it's, a, it's a squad of all Europeans. It was purposefully formed and designed to represent the entire continent of Europe, right? Um, and so to, to be tasked with the storytelling uh, of the individuals, of the team, um, and really the, the the broader sort of trajectory of, of where that whole league is going for this season is is a really big task. Um, and I would say our, our episodic series for The Eternal um, is called First Light. We're four episodes into it so far. Um, they had an amazing season opener against uh, Spitfire, uh, de defeating the defending champions, um, and they've had a couple of, of, of tough matches, you know, as they find their cadence um, as we move into new metas and, you know, they're finding new challengers. And so, you know, our, our, our charter to them is to, to tell the story of this season 
And if it gets really tough, we're going to be there to tell that really tough story. And we're not going to shy away from that, you know, and, and these players um, and the management, even the ownership, they've all embraced that. And, and I'll be honest, guys, I have not seen that, you know, at a team level, um, people encouraging us to, uh, to, to, to essentially show uh, not just the real rawness and the truth behind what's going on, but um, to, to really let the fans experience um, the emotional journey that they're on and to see, you know, after uh, the, you know, the, the game against the Atlanta Reign, um, where, you know, the, those guys pulled off some pretty amazing, you know, first time maneuvers, right, um, on the Reign side, um, you know, it was a it was a really tough day for for these boys and, and for the we, whole work. Right. How, so how do the players handle that, because like, I, like for this, I can kind of compare it to, you know, NFL films or whatever HBO documentary, right, where you follow the team around. Yeah, Professional hard. athletes are used to it, right? They're, they've kind of grown up with the expectations of cameras are going to be in my face. But like for these, some of these guys, you know, this is like their first time, not only in a pro gaming setting, but now they have a documentary crew essentially following them around. Are the, are the, have the players been kind of open to the idea? They have, um, you know, I, I think it, you just touched on a really interesting topic. I mean, the, the notion of, of media training and camera readiness, you know, in our industry is it's almost a meme, you know, in, in many cases, right. You, you see these, these amazing matches that happen. And then the post game interviews uh, are just cringeworthy, you know? <laughs> yeah. um, and, and so when you think about the way that, you know, that, that, that the, this group of, of folks um, in particular, you know, the, the starters on eternal um, have allowed and embraced this to happen um, I think that it's it's really tough for them, you know, and, and I think that um, I'm really proud of every single one of these guys for opening up the way that they have intimate setting, you know, where you have uh, a single videographer with his camera or her camera um, shooting, you know, one player in a one on one capacity. Uh, it, it's it's really something that we in our in our life as a company so far um, in the three years we've been around have, have, I would say, done very well with. We really know how to, to coach out um, and to get players who otherwise would, would be incredibly um, camera shy or standoffish um, and not really have much to say to open up. And there is a, there is a very deliberate methodology behind a lot of that. And it's not just them allowing us to do it. Um, but I, I would say that just to directly answer your question, you know, these players have, have absolutely leaned in on this. They have um, understood that they have, you know, great power and great responsibility representing not just France, but, you know, a lot of the, the greater part of Europe right now, um, all jokes aside around Brexit. And so, you know, I, I think that you're going to start to see more and more um, of this as they become even more comfortable not just with the crew, because uh, you know, think about it, you know, th they don't know us really. We're, we're Americans, you know, these are European mm -hmm. guys that predominantly speak um, other languages, right? Um, and so, you know, there's a little bit of a, of a cultural divide, even uh, amongst how, how we're, we're partnering and working together. Um, but there's trust being built. And I think they're starting to understand and see um, the, the storytelling behind all of this and and it's apparent when you look at the fans response you know if you go to reddit or you read youtube comments or even you know uh replies on twitter to some of the posts that we make uh, man the, the community is just so appreciative of of the realness that this provides and and there's amazing compliments that are being thrown out there um, about this this approach that's being taken so i would personally love to see more and more of this sort of raw real style that's tasteful um yet you know doesn't necessarily apply uh, heavy filters to what's going on i, I mean I, I if you guys have or haven't seen some of these episodes you know particularly episode three I mean, you can see the devastation on the players' faces. And when you're embedded with them and you're in their practice facility inside the Overwatch arena and their coach is, is you know, 
is debriefing them on the game and, and giving a pep talk, uh, you know, about rallying the troops and getting prepared for the, the upcoming week and practice and all the hard work that needs to go into it. And, and there's blank stares and, you know, you, you can just see the emotion. And I think that's what's most moving to me and the chance to unlock and harness that emotion and not only share that, you know, because when we're in that room, you can feel it. You, it's, you're part of it, right? It, whether, whether you want to be or not, you know, you are part of that team. Um, and for us, being able to, to give some of those feels back to the community and get them to co-sign that and say, you know, I cried or I got the chills or all I want to do is embrace them you know, and, and support them in spite of, of some of the, the tough challenges that they've had um, is a huge testament, not just to, you know, to the types of content that, that we're creating on behalf of this team, but, you know, to this insanely supportive community of global gamers all around the world. And for those who uh, haven't seen Paris Eternal First Light, that is on Paris Eternal's uh, YouTube channel. So that's where you that can... That is correct. Yeah, they have episodes one through four there, and you uh, said the the next one should be coming out soon. Uh, yes, yes, it will. Um, we we just recently uh, started adding French subtitles to uh, every single episode, so it it takes a little bit of time <laughs> to get all that right, as you can. I imagine. assume you or Nate are not the ones translating that. Oh, Nate, Je tell it. Nate. <laughs> Nate does all the translations as you can, as you just excellent well uh before we wrap this up I'll, i will give you guys the last word i know you kind of just went over what is next for the future of ultimate and everything um but again i i do think it's crazy how you know our paths have crossed a couple years ago and i remember when i first saw the logo on the e united jersey and i was like wait a minute I recognize that. I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> that's that's Nate's, you know, company there." I was like, "That's insane how, you know, things have grown for you guys. I'm super happy for you." Um, you know, Thank just you. being to meet Nate from, you know, basically at ground zero when it all started and to see how it's kind of morphed into it. It's it's pretty awesome. I I will say that cuz we do have listeners too who, you know, want to get into esports and not necessarily be on the uh quote unquote esports side of it but kind of like how you guys did right with the lifestyle and everything like that if you had to give any final words of wisdom what would you give to that aspiring person who who wants to make it in esports but not necessarily do it like with an org or anything like that um i'll go and then i'll i'm sure chris will be very uh, eloquent and how he wraps it up. But I'd say like, you know, don't be afraid and, you know, take the entrepreneurial journey. And if you're vocal about what you're passionate about and you raise your hand and you say, I want to do this and you're, you are genuine and persistent, people are like magnetically attracted to that energy and they'll want to support you. They'll want to champion you. They'll want to encourage you. And soon enough, you'll look to the left and you'll look to the right and you'll see that you have friends, you'll have buddies, and they'll be like, let's do this together and it won't feel so scary. So I'd say just be persistent and be brave and you'll find your way. Yeah, well said. I would, uh, I would add just, just do, you know, get out there. Don't talk, you know, action, you know, get, jump in, uh, volunteer if, if you need to. Um, you know, you see so many people that are trying to break into this world and so many really impressive people, uh, you know, that, that, that want to try to, to, to change careers. I just one super quick aside, we, we posted a job uh, almost a year and a half ago for a social media manager. And in seven days, we received over 900 applications on LinkedIn alone, right? Jeez. There were PhDs. There were people that, you know, were I, I, debatably not even old enough to, to be on the Internet, really, you know, on, on, a, on a social networking site like LinkedIn um, and everything in between, you know, including a, a gentleman who was one of the founders of Disney Interactive. So, you know, I think that there's such a, a such a demand right now for um, for understanding this world, this culture of of gaming and as a subset of that, of course, um, the competitive gaming side of it. But 
you know, esports is is so much more than just pro players playing on a big stage. It's it's more than the community. It's it, what a lot of people don't realize is even things like today, you know, there's there's opportunities to you know, to get involved in a production capacity, you know, as, as a leading production company in this industry, you know, we empl have employed hundreds, if not thousands of different people, you know, to hold cameras, microphones, technical directors, run streams, observers, um, you name it, you know, if it's part of a professional event series or something like that, just unlock your passion, apply it, be genuine about it, and and be forthcoming but but go get it you know is is really my my advice to people and you know the more hungry uh, not desperate of course but the more hungry that you are and the more willing you are to just show what that means to people you know guys like like myself and Nate you know and and you guys too you know we're all so busy um on our own grind and our own hustle so it's hard sometimes to consciously stop and say well, what do we need to do or, or right. who do we need around us? Right. There's not even enough cognitive um, time in the day, you know, to think through how do you go through 900 applicants that you don't. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, so from my side, I'm I would just say and encourage you guys get involved, um, you know, join different discord communities, listen to amazing podcasts like the one you're listening to right now, study right. the space. Uh, and apply that expertise categorically to something and you will get your shot and, you know, just make sure you're ready when you do. And if I had to add on to that, uh, end up at the same hotel bar with Nate, get snowed in, <laughs> buy him a few drinks and, you, you know, you make an esports friend for life. It worked cool. out so easily. <laughs> right on. Love it. That's right. All right. So let's uh, one more time pimp out everything here at Ultimate on Twitter. Uh, that is uh, their Twitter. Go ahead and follow that. Get all their updates. Uh, like on Thursday, when next Thursday, when the Overwatch League and like they mentioned, new drops every week. <laughs> so keep an eye out for new clothes. Um, AltEsports.com. That will be, get you to their clothing website. Ultimate.gg will get you to their main media venture website. So you can check out everything they have there. You can follow Nate on Twitter. The letter N, the number eight, and then O, 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 O. Well so, done. I mean, I you know, you've already pulled enough strings getting at ultimate, so I understand you can't get at Nate either. You know, yeah, he, he was a casualty. We had to pick the, the company over yeah, you had to, this time. You had, to, you had to pick your battles there, Tim. I understand that. I understand that. And then from what I can tell, Chris is too cool for Twitter. I am on Twitter um, under the number 23 Laker of all time. One of my favorite. Good old Sedale Threet. Um, I am at Sedale 2, the number 2. So, you know, I haven't updated that since the early AOL days. So, no. So, there you go. So, go ahead. Go ahead. For all our listeners, I encourage you go follow uh, Ultimate because obviously, as you've just listened, they uh, are doing a lot, doing a lot, and expect to do more. Uh, gentlemen, I do want to thank you again for coming on the show. I'm, man, I'm glad I was expecting like a 20 minute interview and we pretty much did a full episode, but it was all fascinating, great information. Um, you know, we only had one technical difficulty, which we'll edit out and no one will ever know, Nate, that. Uh, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no one will ever know, but uh, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. I, I had a lot of fun and we need to do it again sometime. Cool. Thank you so, so much. It was a pleasure. We'll talk, talk to you, to you soon. Gentlemen. Later, Appreciate guys. you guys. Right. See ya. And that will just about do it for this episode of The Center Ring. It was a little different than our normal episode, but I still hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. It was uh, really great to hear you know, Chris and, and Nate talk about starting up in, in esports and to see where they are at right now it's a pretty big inspiration i think for any of us in the industry especially if you are looking to get into it it's definitely a, a good starting point to to really listen to them and and do the right thing you know go ahead and follow at ultimate on twitter they'll appreciate it but more importantly so will we we'll also appreciate it if you follow us on twitter at the center ring 
Again, join our Discord, all that fun stuff. We would love to hear from you. How, how did you like the interview? How did you like this type of episode? It's a little different from what we normally do. But again, it was just too good of an interview to cut up. So I'm really glad that we were able to provide it for, for you guys. We will be back next Monday in a couple of days, in fact, doing our normal shtick, talking CWL franchising, CWL Fort Worth. I'm sure we'll find a way to squeeze in some Counter-Strike as Mouse Sports has completely revamped their roster. So that will be fun times. But that's all next week. But for Anuj, for Brett, I'm Tim. We'll see you.